record. Gotta remember to hit record. Where's that intro? There it is. From the beginning. And I was shown that um, uh, that Lucifer would return, that the UN and the Vatican were going to be completely behind it, again, under false pretenses. He's going to show up and say, I'm here to save the day, right? Uh, and, okay, fine, you know. Yeah, of course, ahead, you can try. say whatever you want. But, I've always hated censorship. It's the internet. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, once they get you for your first love bite, well, it depends on how aware you are, right? I forgot my bullets. I never had a gun. Here I am left standing. Am I the only one? For what I see, memories have guilted me. I'll never see the sun. Uh, first of all, as you know, the uh, the Anunnaki and the Draco are enemies. Second of all, underneath Baghdad was a stargate that was created by the Anunnaki so that they could transfer from the Jupiter to the Earth. I'll never see the sun I could just end it all But the demons will have won There are practitioners that you know, some are, are good and some use their magic for good and to heal and to help and others do use it for evil. And, you know, in some cases, you know, people really were. <laughs> this is too much sometimes. From the broken ruins of Babylon, this is End of Days Radio. I am your host, Daniel, broadcasting to you all the way from the Shimmering Emerald City right here in the heart of the Pacific Northwest. The date is October 19th, 2017. My guest tonight is Gary Parker. Gary Parker had a dream which set him on a very interesting path. He has found a very interesting connection between the pyramids and aliens. So we're going to talk to him in just a few moments. And I want to remind you all to go to endofdaysradio.com for all things End of Days Radio. From there, you can access pretty much everything. You can look at our upcoming schedule. You can go on the message board. You can listen to the show. You can listen to the show streaming 24-7. If you just want to turn me on and just listen to me talk all day with all of my friends, you can do that. You can listen while you play pool. You can listen while you work. You can listen while you do all sorts of things. And remember, if you want to call in to End of Days Radio, you can call in at 209-348-9810 or just add Ninja Shoes 777 on Skype. Okay, everybody, remember, after our interview tonight, we will go on break, and then we're going to come back and we'll do our news, letters from listeners, as well as our mind-blowing moment of the day. We've got quite a bit to talk about. I've got some very interesting emails as well as some news to talk about so stay tuned for that i'm going to go ahead and contact my guest tonight so give me a moment daniel can you hear me gary is that you that's <laughs> that's me man can you, do i sound okay uh you're coming in a little staticky hold on let me let me raise this up a little bit how about now how does this sound oh that sounds much better <laughs> Does it really? I just lifted the, the the mouthpiece up a little bit. The uh, you know the receiver. Yeah, there was just a little static coming in before. I'm I'm hearing a little background noise, but I'm I'm guessing this is probably as good as we're going to get it. 
Yeah, probably. There's really nothing going on other than a fan. Oh, okay. I don't want you to overheat, so I'll go ahead and ignore that. <laughs> Thanks, man. So just to get us started here, I'd love to hear a little bit about your background, uh, where you came from, how things started off, and then if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and just move right into this very interesting thing that you'd like to share with us tonight. Oh, great. And we're on the air right now, Daniel? Uh, yes, we are live. Okay, great. Well, um, I was born and raised in Wilmington, Delaware, and, uh, and in the late 70s, I moved out to Los Angeles. And uh, I became, a, I was in real estate, I became a real estate developer. And then um, I, uh, I, I lived in Sherman Oaks, California for about 25 years. And, uh, and I, um, I actually tried my hand at writing scripts, screenplays. And I was lucky enough, I, I got together with a lady by the name of Marjorie Rose. And we were lucky enough to sell a few scripts. And we had one movie made with Jenny McCarthy. Uh, it was called Thank Heaven. And... Um, yeah, it was good. We sold a couple of scripts and uh, all that kind of stuff, and it was great. And then I, uh, about three or four years ago, I moved out to Phoenix, and uh, I'm still working in, in. I'm still working as a screenwriter, and I'm also doing some real estate out here. And what I did was now to get into the the story of what we're going to talk about here, the alien message beside the Great Pyramid in, in Egypt. What happened was, uh, Daniel, is I came up with a great idea. I thought it was a great idea on how to promote world peace. Uh, Daniel, before I, before I go into this, anytime you feel like stopping me, please do, because I'll, I'll go on and on, okay? Oh, okay, I, I do have a quick question for you. I, I'm, I'm quite ahead. a fan of the movies myself. Uh, what, what inspired you? What made you want to get into break into the movie business? Well, some of, I, I, I was in a basketball league uh, at the Hollywood YMCA, and a lot of the guys on the team were actually really great uh, screenwriters. And they had, a couple of them had hit movies. They were big, big movies. And uh, while we were playing, I would tell them jokes, and we'd be joking around. And I came up with a couple story ideas. And uh, one of the guys said, Gary, I think I can help you sell this idea. Why don't you, why don't you learn how to write a script and uh, you know, uh, buy the, um, you know, script, uh, the script format on, on the, on the, for the computer? And I'll help you sell the script. And I said, that'd be great. So what I did was I, but I'm really not the greatest writer in the world. Uh, I'm actually a great idea man. So I came up with a couple of great ideas. I got together with Marjorie Rose. We wrote a couple of scripts and uh, we sold them uh, with, the, with, these, with these really famous writers' help. And uh, <laughs> so, but like I said, only one low budget one got made, uh, which is okay. But I've been in the screenwriter's guild for 22 years. So, so yeah, yes, that's how it happened. Very cool. Uh, please continue. Yeah. Oh, okay. So anyway, so Dan, so what happens is I'm doing my regular thing, just being as boring as possible. But then I come up with this great idea. I think, how can I help promote world peace? And I, and I think to myself, you know what would be really cool? What if the world got together and restored the Great Pyramid in the Sphinx? Now, when I say restored, I don't mean to working condition. I mean just so it looks nicer because when you look at it, it looks like it's falling apart. Every time you, you see a picture of it, it's falling apart. I mean, no one, it's just, it's horrible. But you got to remember that Egypt is $284 billion in debt. They have rolling blackouts throughout Cairo, <clears throat> excuse me, and, uh, and they have no money to do it. So I thought, you know how cool it would be is if, if I did a global crowdfunding, everybody in the world, all the countries, now there's 193 countries in the UN, and let's say 10 of them don't like the Great Pyramid or the Sphinx, but all the rest do. So I figured, what if everybody chipped in a buck or two? College students, uh, high school, junior high, they all get together, and we do this project together as a world, and we see it 24 hours a day. It's, it's, it's on camera, and we watch it as it's being, uh, as it's being um, uh, restored. I, and I thought, that'd be a great idea. So I thought, well, you know what? I need some seed money. I need some startup money. So what I should do is is contact a couple billionaires and see if they like this idea. So I have a couple friends in Hollywood that are pretty big producers, and they, I told them the idea. And they said, Gary, this is great. So I said, do you guys have anybody's email that I could send this to where I could maybe raise 10 or $20 million to get this going? And one of my friends, uh, producer friends, gave me um, Sir Richard Branson, you know, from Atlanta, um, from Virgin Atlantic, Air, you know, Virgin Atlantic, Sir Richard Branson. You've heard of him, right, Daniel? I've heard the name. Okay. He also has a thing called Virgin Galactic. 
And there's also a, a guy by the name of Elon Musk who has SpaceX, and he also has Tesla. And he was a guy who. Oh, I know him, the Tesla guy, absolutely. Okay, you know, you know Elon Musk. Well, Sir Richard Branson was. He, is, 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 he owns islands. Anyway, he's amazing. So what happens is, is I shoot them, I shoot them an email. Daniel, the next day. The very next day in the morning, I get an email from Sir Richard Branson. He said, Gary, I don't know how you got my email, but I love this idea. I would love to be part of restoring the Great Pyramid and the Sphinx. Is this for real or is this a joke? I emailed him right back. I said, Sir Richard, thank you so much. I said, I, I said uh, first of all, he said, how did you get my email? And I, I said, I can't tell you that. But, but anyway, what happens is I said to him, I said, this is for real. I'm putting it together, and I need some some startup money. And he said, well, Gary, you have a lot to do before anybody puts in any money, but keep me in the loop. Here's my foundation's phone number over in New York. I've already sent them your email. They're aware of this project, and I really would like to be part of it. And I said, thank you. I'll get back to you in six months or so. Because, you know, Daniel, being a real estate developer, I, I know how to build houses. I even know how to build some condo complexes. But, you know, when you're talking about the Great Pyramid, you're talking the billions of dollars. So anyway, so 10 minutes or two, maybe 20 minutes after I got – a Richard Branson's email, I got an email from a, not Elon Musk, but from a lady by the name of Gwyneth Shotwell. And Gwyneth Shotwell is the president of SpaceX. And she said, she emailed me, she said, Gary, Elon and I love this idea. We would love to be part of this. Is this for real? And how did you get Elon's email? So I said, look, I, I can't tell you. I emailed her right back and I said, thank you so much. I said, um, I said the same thing I said to Richard Branson. Uh, it's in its infancy. And give me a few months. I'll get back to you. And we'll, I said, I need some seed money. And they said, well, keep us in the loop. We, we would love to be part of this. So, Daniel, all of a sudden, one day after, two days after I come up with this idea, I have a couple billionaires who want to be part of it. And I thought, oh, this is such a positive vibe. So uh, all things are going great. So I said, I said, you know what I should do? I should look at a couple NASA photos of the Giza Plateau. You know, that's where the Great Pyramid is on the Giza Plateau. In Egypt. And uh, what happens is I said, well, I should look at where we could put trucks and people. I, I'm putting the cart way before the horse. But I, I was so excited that these two billionaires loved the idea. I thought, yeah, I'm going to look just look at the area. Well, what I did was I, I pulled up one photo from 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 the NASA website. And that photo was actually taken from the International Space Station. And it's an, it's an iconic shot of the Great Pyramid and the Sphinx and everything, but it's from 200 miles above the Earth, you know, because the International Space Station, uh, you know, circles the Earth, and they take, uh, they actually have an astronaut who has a huge Canon camera, and he takes a picture out of the window uh, of the uh, space station. So what happened was, is I pull up, and if, if I can, um, uh, Daniel, can I tell your listeners the, the file number for the website uh, for, so they can pull it up if they want to? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Do you have it downloaded onto your website or no? Uh, no, I was actually looking at the uh, – this is the Midnight in the Desert website. Yes. So to, to, I'm sorry about that phone. My phone's going to go off in a second. Oh, no worries. Uh, what – What? Um, tell you – if I can tell your listeners, they can go to Gary Parker. That's G-A-R-Y Parker, P-A-R-K-E-R, Midnight in the Desert, and all of the photos are there. So, but if they want to go to the NASA website, the file number is ISS 032 E 009123. That's ISS 032 E 009123. When you go, when, when, when you, when you type, when you Google that, that those call numbers and letters, you, what will pop up is a thing that says NASA pyramids at Giza, Egypt. You click on that, it will take you to the photo. Now, when you get to the photo, you will see – you have to scroll down to the right side, and you'll see download image. You have to click on full size. If you don't click on full size, you won't be able to zoom in close enough to see the alien message. Okay. Is that enough explanation, Daniel? Uh, sure, yeah. Okay, cool. So what happens is – is like I said, most people who look at these these NASA or uh, International Space Station photos, they just look at them from a distance. They go, "Oh, that's nice," and they just move on. I think I'm the only one who zoomed in on the Great Pyramid. So what I did was I zoom in to see where we could put machinery and and men and bathrooms and everything else. And uh, 
all of a sudden, as I'm zooming in, I look at the – now, you, everybody has to know that when you're looking at the photo, it's upside down. It was downloaded upside down by NASA. So when you're looking at it, north is down, south is up. So I've zoomed in onto the Great Pyramid, and I look on the south side. Now, on the south side of the Great Pyramid, the only thing that's on that on that side is a small museum with a pharaoh's boat that they found it. You know, the pharaoh's boat that they found about 15 years ago, and they built a small museum there. So what happened was, was I zoomed in, and I saw the museum, but I saw these things. It looked like writing. It, it's massive. It's giant. It, it, from a distance, from 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 space or from the sky, it it looks like shadows. But as you zoom in, it looks like writing. And on the website, on the um, Harry Parker uh, Midnight in the Desert website, you can see I actually wrote out the letters, and they were gigantic. And I and I saw them. I said, Oh my gosh, that looks like a that looks like writing. And I didn't know what it said naturally because I don't know ancient uh, ancient languages. So I wrote it down. Uh, and I took a picture with my phone. And uh, I uh, sent Gary, it to, Gary, can I ask a ahead. quick question? So I'm looking at the Midnight in the Desert website, and I see yes. uh, a top picture that says NASA Pyramid Picture, and yes. a bottom one that says NASA Pyramid Picture. Am, I'm, am I looking at? Am I supposed to be looking at the one with the uh, the highlighted red? No, scroll down. Oh, okay. Scroll down, and you're going to see some writing. It's a, it's 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 a, forget the pyramid right now. Just look at the writing. Can oh. you scroll down, and can you see there's there's like uh, I wrote it in pen. Oh, okay. I see it now. Okay. Can you see it? Yeah. This I got the right picture now. Thanks. Okay. So, I, and, and if your listeners see it, they'll see that there's this writing and it looks bizarre. But I said, that says something. And because all this stuff had to do with Egypt, I thought, well, maybe this is some kind of message. You know what I mean? So what happens is I wrote it down and I sent it to a couple Egyptologists in Egypt. I sent it to a couple of Judaic scholars and a couple Aramaic scholars. Okay. So, um, and I said to him, I said, does this say anything? Is this a language? Could you get back to me? Uh, maybe about an hour or two later, I get an email from a very famous Egyptologist. Her name is Dr. Salima Ikrin. And she is actually a, the head Egyptologist at American University of Cairo. And she said, Gary, this is some kind of writing. I don't know what it says, but where did you find it? And I wrote her back and I said, I found it on the south side of the Great Pyramid. I'm, I'm, yes, on the south side of the Great Pyramid. I said, it's massive. The writing is almost as big as the pyramid. And it runs east and west along the length of the pyramid. And she said, would you send me the photo? I sent it to her. Maybe 15, 20 minutes later, she goes, Gary, that's impossible. She goes, those are letters there. But there's, no, she goes, but there's nothing there that could make those shadows. She said, the only thing that's there is the, is the, uh, the museum with the pharaoh's boat in it. She said, there's nothing that could make these shadows or these letters. And she said, and some of the shadows are going up onto the Great Pyramid. She said, this is impossible. She said, can you give me a couple months? Let me work on this. I'm going to give it to some of my colleagues because this is impossible what I'm looking at right now. I said, fantastic. Thank you so much. So, uh, so, you know, so I let that go. And then maybe the next day or two, I got an email back from a couple Aramaic scholars and a Judaic scholar over here in Arizona. And they said, uh, they told me what they thought it, it said. They said, look, we're not 100% sure, but it kind of looks like like an I and an M and a creator or God and language like that. They said, but we need a little more time because we've never seen this language, but it looks like a, a mixture, a hybrid of, of, um, of uh, Aramaic and of, uh, of Hebrew and a couple other languages. Wow, so, that is crazy. Yeah, no doubt, man. I mean, it was insane. So I'm thinking, oh, my God, I'm finding like an alien message here. So so all this is happening. And so uh, I also beside the photo and I don't and I think it's on the um, on the website that you're looking at the midnight in the desert. If you it might not be there, but I also found some ancient Hebrew not too far from the smaller pyramid. And I wrote it down and I sent it to. A Ju the Judaic scholar down at the University of Arizona. So I sent it to him because he had already looked at the first thing and couldn't believe it. And he emails me right back. This is maybe like three or four days later. And he says, Gary, he says, can you come down here and show me where you found this? And I said, well, could you translate it for me? And he said, sure. It says, it says, and like I said, Daniel, this is written above the third smaller pyramid. And it says, God and the Lord of the underworld. And I thought, wow, how crazy is that? So I go down the meeting. I, I, luckily for me, I'm only about an hour and a half north of uh, Tucson. 
So I drive down, I meet with him, and he sees it, and I show him where I find it. He says, Gary, this is impossible. Now, you got to know this guy, uh, the, the scholar's name is Dr. Edward Wright, and he, he's worked on the Dead Sea Scrolls. You're familiar with those, right? Oh, oh yeah, definitely. The okay. uh, scrolls well, he, that were unearthed that they got all the uh, lost books out of. Exactly, exactly. So anyway, so he's worked on the Dead Sea Scrolls, and he says, Gary, he goes, what you're showing me is impossible. And he says, to tell you the truth, I don't know you. He said, you walk into my office, you show me this. And he says, he says, I got to tell you, I think you photoshopped it. And I said, I said, how many people, Dr. Wright, do you know that can write ancient Hebrew? He goes, well, not many. And I said, and how many people do you know that could hack into a NASA website and put it on their photo? He goes, well, yeah, that is kind of far fetched. I said, it's impossible. I said, NASA's the, you know, the greatest minds in the world. You're not going to hack into their website. He said, well, Gary, you know what, man? He goes, I'm not going to believe what I'm looking at here. So I said, okay. I said, I can't force you. It's not a problem. So Daniel, what I did was I called uh, Arizona State University. They have a, um, they have guys up there, professors who can actually, they, they build software. These guys are geniuses. So I may, I have a meeting with a Dr. Gupta and a Dr. Whitehouse up there. I take them the information that I'm, that I'm telling you about, and I show them the photo. Now, the NASA photo, the NASA photo I had found out by using, now here's how I found it, too, by using a laptop computer and looking at the photo, zooming in, zooming out, and tilting the laptop in, in a very dark room, pitch black, pitch black is best. You tilt it, and I noticed that the photo has four levels to it, four levels. And on the fourth level, it's all Hebrew, a lot of Hebrew writing. So what I did was I said, you know what, I, I, t- I took it up to the to the professors up at Arizona State University, and they look at it, and they said, Gary, this is impossible. They said, we don't have this technology to do this. this. They said, the only people who could possibly do this is NASA, and why would they put this information in their own photo? I said, well, guys, what if it's an alien message, and and it was put in there for us to see it? And they said, well, Gary, that's a little far-fetched. But, but, and then one of this Dr. Whitehouse, he says to me, he says, Gary, I don't know if you know this. He took out a magnifying glass and he looked at the photo. He said, here's another thing. This whole photo, it's a binary code that only has zeros. There's no ones. And I said, and, and Daniel, I didn't know what that meant because I'm not, a, you know, I'm a real estate guy. I'm a screenwriter. I don't, I don't know much about binary codes. I said, well, what does that mean, Doc? He says, well, Gary, that means we didn't, nobody on earth did this. Because there's no ones in this. They're all zeros. And I said, well, will you guys help me? I said, And they said, no. They said, we don't want to have anything to do with this. And I said, why not? And they said, because we have 10,000 students. Our lives are busy enough, and we, can, we can't be bothered with this. So, so anyway, so Daniel, so I, hit, I hit that hurdle. So since the, I found all this Hebrew, I went to I, – I, I decided I should talk to a couple um, rabbis up here in uh, Phoenix – so I go to the rabbis, I show them, the, I show them the, ancient, the, the Hebrew, and they translate some of it. Well, one of the translations beside the words that say God and the Lord of the underworld was a date. And you know me, I don't know Hebrew. So how, they, one of the rabbis says, Gary, there's a date here, and it says July 26, 2022. They go, does that mean anything to you? To me, they asked me. And I said, well, I said this photo was downloaded on the NASA website on on July 26, 2012. So that's 10 years from that date, exactly 10 years. And they and I said, well, what do you guys think? And they said, Gary, we have no idea, but to tell you the truth, we're not going to believe anything you've showed us because we think you photoshopped this photo. And I said, <laughs> guys, I said, I heard that from a Judaic scholar. So anyway, so they said, well, Gary, we're not going to believe anything you showed us because th- what you showed us is impossible. So Anyway, all that happened, Daniel, all the, all, the, all the hurdles I tried to get over. So now here comes the paranormal experience. I, Daniel, have never seen an alien, never seen a UFO, never saw a ghost. Now, I believe in those things, but I've never seen one, and I've never heard voices ever. So, Daniel, that night after I had met with the rabbis, I'm, I'm asleep, and I have this dream. And in the dream, a voice says to me, it says, Gary, Go down to the river. Now, now, when I say river, there's a river like maybe four miles from me in a small town called Florence, Arizona. It's called the Gila River. 
this voice says, it was a man's voice. It was like a deep voice, a regular voice. And it said, Gary, go to the Gila River and say these words three times in Hebrew. So, and it tells me how to say these words. It was, it was Father, 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 Holy, Holy, Holy. Where did you come from? Where did you really come from? Well, well, Daniel, I don't know Hebrew. So I called that morning. I called one of the one of the rabbis I had met, and I said, "Hey, Rabbi, can you spell me out these words? Father, 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 Holy, Holy, Holy. Where did you come from? Where did you come from? Phonetically, so I can say them." And he said, "Why do you want to say them?" I said, "I had a wacky dream, and because of all this stuff that I'm finding, I'm going to go down this river and give it a shot." So, and and so I go down to the river. I, first of all, I, mem- I, I learn it because uh, and, and I kind of say it a few times. So I go down to the river, Daniel, and uh, the river, like I said, in, in the desert, in the middle of the desert, there's this big water. Like there's a big, almost like a small lake. The water isn't running, but there's water there. And so I take off my shoes and socks. I, I stand in the water just up to my ankles. I face east because I've read in ancient Egypt, whenever they talk to the gods or anybody, they always face east because of the rising sun and a new day. I stand there and I put my hands up and I yell out in Hebrew, Father, 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 Holy, 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 where did you come from? Where did you really come? And I say it real loud, Daniel, real loud. Like you can tell how loud I am. So I'm, I'm, I'm really loud. And uh, nothing happens. So I, so I think, well, okay, well, nothing happened. Whatever. It's, it, was a, it was a weird dream. I come back the next morning, Daniel, I wake up at 545. I'm covered in sweat, covered in sweat. And Daniel, I I usually sleep seven to eight hours perfect. I never move. And I'm kind of healthy, so I never I never really I'm very rarely sick. I look across after I sit up, I'm going, what's wrong with me? I'm covered in sweat. I look at my desk and on my desk, I have my computer, the laptop, and it's open. But it's it's off. All of a sudden, it clicks on. It just pops on, Daniel, to that photo, to the photo, the NASA photo. And and all of a sudden, I can see things in this photo that are just unbelievable. Now, let me tell you the first thing and tell your listeners. Do you have any questions? Am I rambling? Uh, no, please continue. All right. So, okay. If you have any questions, just stop me. So uh, it, it comes right onto that picture of Cairo and the Giza Plateau. Now, uh, do you have the photo pulled up on the um, – there's one that I traced out in red. Can you see that one? Can you scroll down to that one? You, you'll see I have I have certain areas traced in red. Okay. I'm looking at that one now. Okay. what? That's the picture that popped on. All of a sudden, I could see, and I trace it in the – like I said, for your listeners, if they go to Gary Parker, Midnight in the Desert, they'll see the, they'll see the, the NASA photo, and they'll see that I trace some things in red. If you look at that photo and you make it a little smaller, you make it a little smaller so it's kind of in the middle of your your, your screen, you'll see that I have traced the, on the right-hand side of that photo, if you cut it down the middle, on the right-hand side is the Giza Plateau, where the three pyramids are. On the left side is Cairo, the city. What I did was I could see from a distance, from when I sat up in bed, the whole right side of that photo is the left profile of an alien. Now, when I say alien, I don't mean like a gray alien. I mean like an elongated head, and you can see he's got a round chin, his whole neck. The whole right side of that is the left profile of a huge alien, and he's got a huge head, and his nose would be just above, his little pointy nose is just above the Great Pyramid. Then he comes down, he has a mouth, and you can see there's kind of like homes or or things in the mouth. They almost look like teeth. And then he has a round chin, and he has a real thick neck. When you look at him, or when you see his profile, think of the um, Nefertiti uh, bust. That's very famous. Who she was the Akhenaten. Uh, she was the, the the wife of Akhenaten, and she had a huge elongated head. It's a very famous bust. Think of that, but male. Can you make that um, profile out on the photo, Daniel? Yeah, actually, I do see it. It looks as though that it's wearing one of those hats, kind of like. Yes, a, well, just yeah. picture that. That's its head. Okay. And what I'll do, that's its head. See, it, but you're right. It looks like it's a hat, but that's actually his head. But that's a, that whole right side is the profile, okay? So what I did, when I saw that, I said, oh, my God, that's a profile of an alien. The whole right side, the whole Giza Plateau, the whole right side, if you cut the, cut the photo in the, down the middle, on the right side is the alien, and he's looking across – He's looking, He's like I said, it's his, his left profile. So his left eye is looking over at Cairo. And can you see that I put a, um, 
like I outlined a cross. Can you see that cross I made up there, Daniel? I outlined it in red. Yeah, I see it. You see that? Okay. That cross, that cross is is the um, constellation of Cygnus, C-Y-G-N-U-S. It's the constellation of Cygnus. If you're looking at that photo on a laptop and you tilt the screen back, all the lights from uh, from Cairo will go away except for the one that's in the middle of the intersection of that cross. And that is the planet Sadr, S-A-D-R, S-A-D-R. Um, and that's what the alien is looking at. He's looking at his home planet, and that's the constellation of Cygnus. Now, and I kind of, I kind of jumped ahead, but let me tell you this: after I saw that, and I didn't know that was Cygnus to, to, uh, when I first looked at the, when I first saw the alien's profile. But what I did, I jumped out of bed because I said, "Oh my God, I can see so many things in this photo now." I jumped in the, I jumped in my truck, I drove back down to the river, took my shoes off. I yelled up those the same thing in Hebrew three times, and then just in a regular voice, I yelled up. I said, "Hey, I said, is this for real? Are you showing me this? Is this is this some kind of message? Because if it is, I have to be part of it. You have to let me help out as much as I can. Or are you coming back? Right? So I said, whatever it is, I want to be part of it. Please show me everything, Daniel." I come back home, man, I turn off all the lights, I get the photo, I can see everything in this photo. That's when I found out, that's when I figured out that that's a constellation of Cygnus on the right-hand side. Because what I did was I, I drew a map of the, the cross and where the, where the points of light were, and I sent it to a couple astronomers at the University of Arizona and at ASU, Arizona State University. And they said, oh yeah, this is, this is Cygnus. Because, <laughs> because, because at first, when I first saw, it, I didn't know what it was, but I knew that the alien head was looking at something, and it was the constellation. So anyway, so go ahead. Is there any questions? Uh, uh, no, I'm I'm just fascinated. It seems that you have stumbled upon something incredible. Well, what's incredible is it's so big that, like, when I showed it to the Ju- Judaic scholar, he said, "Gary." There's no way that's that's an alien. I go, it is an alien, but he wouldn't believe it. I said, it is. And I said, now, now it's even going to get crazier, the paranormal stuff, okay? So all this stuff is going on. Going on. Hey, I Gary, can I stop you for one second? Go ahead. I, I just want to say, I my listeners, they know that I'm very into the ancient aliens thing. And, I love and, and, I, and as you're talking, I'm like hearing all these different connections all over the place. Oh, t- it totally. It's totally ancient aliens. It's totally, but it's even, it's even, it even goes hand in hand though with uh, Judaism and the uh, Judea, uh, 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 Jewish eschatology. Are you familiar with that? Oh yeah, I, I've had a couple of those guys on here. I, th- those are some of the links that I'm, I'm noticing. This whole thing is tying a lot together. Okay, it, it will. T- I'm going to tie it together with a bow for you, Daniel. Okay. Okay. So. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. So what happened? <laughs> so what happens is, is after this all happened, I start making, I start having meetings with with academics all over the place, all different kinds of academics, with with priests, with rabbis, with uh, ministers, and they all freak out. I mean, some one actually started crying when I showed him all the stuff that's in this photo. Because you got to remember, Daniel, the the photo has four levels to it. On each level, and when I say the, the way you can see it is by tilting, you have to download it onto a laptop, and you have to zoom in and zoom out to your eye, and you have to make the room pitch black. You have to zoom in and zoom out, sometimes even use a magnifying glass, and you'll see all the levels, and you'll see all the all the billions and millions of people and writing that are in this photo. And you might say, well, Gary, how – well, you know what? I'm, I'm going to – I'm sorry I'm jumping around. I'm skipping around. Let me say this. You, you might say to me, well, Gary, how did this all get into the folk? Okay. It's, it was the Great Pyramid. Okay. And let me explain something. A year after I found all this stuff, and, re, and let's remember that, that date, July 26, uh, 2022. Okay. And like I said, the photo was downloaded on uh, July 26, 2012, which was only five months before uh, the Mayan calendar expired. On uh, on December twenty first, two thousand and twelve. Okay, it all ties together because what I did was I went to a website and I looked at the Sun and Moon Pyramid in um, in uh, in Mexico, and the same writing that I found on the Great Pyramid 
is on the Sun Pyramid, the Sun and Moon Pyramid in Mexico. Okay, so, and like I said, your listeners can go and, and they can get a copy of my, of my uh, writing and they can compare it to themselves, compare it for themselves. But anyway, let's get back to Egypt. So what happened was a year goes by and I have all these meetings and, I, and I'm upsetting. I get thrown out of every church, out of every, out of every, um, every temple. I, went, I even went to a synagogue and I talked with a, uh, I talked with an imam and he said, Gary, this is not in the Quran. I, I can't have anything to do with it. I said, no problem. Don't worry about it. So what happens is, is I, I, um, and maybe two or three times a week, I went down to the river. So I'd been down to the river maybe 35 or 30, maybe 34, 35 times. And on the 36th, it was either the 36th or 38th time, I, I have a dream. And the dream, the, the man's voice comes back and he says, go to the river. And like I said, too, Daniel, I, I haven't been, I'm not a religious guy. I haven't been in a church uh, for 40 years. So um, so I think, so the whole time this is happening and I'm going through all these meetings, I'm thinking to myself, well, this is some kind of message and it's my duty or responsibility to show everybody all the stuff in this photo so they can hear the message. But I didn't know what the message was. So all of a sudden, I go down to the river when, when I had the dream and, and uh, did and the voice said, go to the river. So I go to the river, and I'm figuring something's bound to happen. So, and you got here's one thing too. The river is about four or 500 yards off of a main road. Uh, so there's nobody around, and it's all deserty, and it's like in the middle of nowhere. So, so I stand in the water, I say my spiel, you know, I say, uh, Father, 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 Holy, 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 which is actually Abba, 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 Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Where did, uh, and then I say a couple other things. And for the first time, Daniel, I see up in the east side of the, of the sky, because I always look up at the sky when I do it. I see things that look like crystals, like, like almost like there's kind of an, a rip in the sky because it's, it's, it's sunny. It's, it's only like tw- it might be 12 or 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and it's sunny, it's hot, and, uh, and I see this kind of ripple in the sky. And the ripple starts to move a little further, like, like north, northeast, and kind of hovers over the water. And there's a lot of water there, Daniel. So like I said, it's like a small lake. So it's, and there's no one around. So all of a sudden, this, these crystals, <laughs> Daniel, this is going to, you, you, you might believe it. So what happens is these crystals, they kind of flatten out. And these two, do you know what cherubim are, Daniel? Uh, aren't they some type of angel? Exactly. There actually, there was a guy, but there was a prophet. His name was Ezekiel. And, uh, and he actually had this vision of these things called cherubim, which have four face and two sets of wings. And they had these metal wheels that were spinning around them. Okay. And what they, but he saw four of them. Well, all of a sudden I see two of them and they're huge. They're like 18 or 20 feet tall. They're hovering above the water and they're not. And one of them, now you got to remember, I've been looking at this photo for over a year now and I saw this cherubim in the photo. And I saw his face, and, I, and on his left side was a lion. On his right side was a raven. Uh, up above, he kind of looked like a, an ogre or, or a bull. And when he looked at me straight on, he, he had a human face. But what happened was, Daniel, in the photo, the, written in Hebrew, was a name that I had sent. I actually showed it to the rabbis. And they said, yeah, that name is Uriel, U-R-I-E-L. So I looked it up, and I... That Uriel name, that was a that was like the head cherubim, like the main one of the main uh, angels that was actually uh, he's posted at the east gate of the Garden of Eden. So I see this thing, these two things, and they're flapping their wings and 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 they're like doing this thing in sync, almost like the kind of like a performance. And I look at him and I say to him, and, and just know this too, um, Daniel, when this happened. I wasn't afraid at all. I, I thought this was the greatest thing. And I was actually expecting something that because the voice said something to happen because I was because the voice said, go to the river. So all of a sudden I said, well, I said, you're Uriel. And he said, yes, I am. And I said, man, this is awesome. So all of a sudden he said, Gary, we have a message for you. And I said, hey, whatever it is. And they said, no, Abba's going to tell you. And he said, Abba, father. So all of a sudden I see above them, above them is this crystal kind of like platform, and it's maybe, I'm going to say, one or two feet thick. And above above them, and I'm going to send you the, the picture that I drew of it. I didn't, I, I don't think, it might be on the NASA photo. 
if you if if you're looking at the um, midnight in the desert. Uh, if you look at one of the photos, I've actually drew the alien that shows up. C- can you scroll down and see it? Yeah, uh, number four, alien withdrawing. Yes. What happens is, is this alien appears on top of this platform. I couldn't see his feet. He was huge, like 30 feet tall. But, Daniel, the thing was, was um, he, they didn't look real. They look. They look like they were on fire. They look like they were. They were burning. They look like metal, like burnt metal, almost like brass. And uh, but I did recognize the Uriel guy, and I also recognized the alien because that's his profile in the photo. So what happens is, is I look at him, and unlike the unlike the um, the uh, angels, he has this alien face, but inside of his face, now he's he's like thirty feet tall. He has huge shoulders he has huge hands and inside his face are like 60 human faces but of like biblical people like you know if you like how jesus looked or how we think moses would look like and there was men and women and they were all made up his face so but what happens is is they didn't look real like it looked like a projection it it, it didn't look like well first of all they were out in the middle of the water so i couldn't get to them so it, but it looked like i put my hand through them so i say to uriel I say, Uriel, is this a projection? Is that is that why there's only is that why those wheels are spinning so I can see this? And he said, Yes, this is a projection. And I said, Well, but in this in this prophet named Ezekiel, he saw four angels. I'm only seeing two. And naturally, because I'm a genius, I say, Is there only two of you because you're closer to Earth than you were when Ezekiel saw you? He said, Yes, we're closer to your planet. And I said, That's fantastic. So all of a sudden, I look at the big alien. And, and like I said, the angel was talking to me with his mouth, not with it, not telepathically. But the huge alien, I said to him, I said, what should I call you? Now, he didn't talk with his mouth. And, and he like talked with a voice uh, telepathically into my head. Now, but all the people's faces, all the, uh, the, the, the what are they called? The, uh, the uh, people that made up his face, they were speaking a different language, like, I'm pretty sure it was Hebrew, but I don't know Hebrew. So, but they were all speaking a different language as he was speaking to me telepathically. And he told me, he said, call me Abba. And I said, great, that's great, Abba. Well, so first of all, I think it, it sounds unbelievable, but I was so blown away with this. I was like, I was so excited about it, but I wanted somebody else to see it. So Daniel, out here in this desert, there... There's kids always ride their ATVs or their motorcycles, you know, like desert, deserty things, right? And they jump over sand dunes and everything. So uh, in the background behind me, now I'm looking at this thing and it's talking to me. And it says to me, Gary, no one else can see us, only you. And I said, well, that's a drag, man. I said, because I need someone to see this. So so they, everybody won't think I'm crazy. So he said, Gary, not at this time. It's and I said, well, when when am I when are you going to show up? When can I when can I bring people down to this river and show you? They said, we will return when the rabbis told you we'll return. I said, you mean that date that was in the that's in the NASA photo? He said, yes, that date is July 26, 2022. And I said, well, are you going to return to Egypt or are you going to return to Jerusalem? And they said, we're going to return to the Temple Mount on July 26, 2022. I said, that's awesome. I said, but that still doesn't help me showing people because they're going to think I'm crazy. And they said, no, you'll, people will believe you. Just do what you've been doing and blah, blah. So, so, and I said, well, naturally, I said, well, are you going to come down like in a flying saucer? And he said, I will show you the image of what will appear on the, on the, um, on the Temple Mount on July 26th. So he shows me this image in my head. And Daniel, are you, for, do, do, you like movies, right? Oh, definitely. Okay. Do you remember Keanu, Keanu Reeves did a movie called The Day the Earth Stood Still? I haven't seen that one, but I'm oh, aware dude. of it. Oh, dude. Okay. What happens is when he shows up, he, he actually lands in a craft, but it's not a craft. It's like a spinning orb, and it looks like a multidimensional craft that looks like it's, – it's almost looks like it's all clouds and, and, and multidimensions, and it's all spinning, and it lands in Central Park in New York. If you go to um, – uh, YouTube, you can see it. And that was the image that Abba showed me in my head that was going to land on the Temple Mount. So I said to him, and like I said, if you know anything about 
the first temple, the second temple, the third temple, and um, and uh, eschatology, the, you know, prophecy. Uh, I said to him, I said, so you're saying that the Jews do not have to build the third temple? He said, no, we, I will come down in the third temple. So, and there was a very famous um, uh, Judaic sage back in the 1500s. Uh, his name was Rashi, and he said that that the third temple does not have to be built, that God will come down out of the sky in the third temple. And that's exactly what Abba, the huge alien, told me was going to happen. I said, fantastic. Now, here's the cool part. Even though all this is the cool part. All of a sudden, I hear, behind me, I hear, and it's some kids riding the motorcycles, jumping over the dunes. So I, I don't turn away from, from Abba or from the angels, but, but I look over my shoulder because I'm hoping even though they told me, Daniel, and, I, and I'm not saying that I was a liar or those angels are liars, but I was so hoping that someone could see it. A kid pulls up on the motorcycle in the bank, and he looks at me, and he goes, Hey, mister, that water's disgusting. What are you doing in there? Well, Daniel, the water in, the, in this, in this, in this uh, small lake, it is disgusting. It's terrible. You, you don't want to fall into it. And I said, uh, I said Hey, kid. And I turned away from Abba, from, from, from the alien, and I said, hey, kid, can you see anything hovering over that water? And, these, and they're huge, Daniel. Like I said, they're 20 and 30 feet tall on a, crystal, on a crystal platform. And the kid said, I don't see anything. And I said, well, then don't worry about it. I said, I'm just cooling my feet off. He goes, hey, that water's disgusting. Don't stay in there too long. I said, I won't. Thanks a lot. So the kid takes off. Now, I turn back <laughs> to look at the, you know, Abba and the two and I swear to God, this happened. The two uh, the two angels, and they both roll their eyes at me like, "What a jerk!" You know, like like I didn't believe them. And I looked at them. I said, "Guys, I said, come on, you got to give me a break here." I said, "I I, I did believe you." You know, it, it was almost like you stupid human. Can't you just you know take our word for it? But anyway, so I thought that was kind of funny. What are your thoughts? Yeah, that's incredible. I, <laughs> <laughs> I know. Dude, but you know, the thing is, I'm I'm a wacky comedy screenwriter. I come up with crazy ideas. Um, I've worked with a, with a couple good directors. I'm funny, you know. And and if they hired me for this job, if they showed me all this stuff on the internet and told me to come down to the, to, to the river and to stand in the river, well, they got to know that I'm not, I'm not that serious. Like, yes, I take it serious. But if I see somebody walking past, I'm going to yell to them and say, hey, can you see this? This is amazing. And they can't see it. So, yes, these aliens who actually, I think, have a great sense of humor, rolled their eyes at me. Now, the, the second uh, second um, uh, angel, he, he rolled his eyes at me. And I said, hey, dude, I actually called him dude. I said, I don't even know who you are, so don't roll your eyes at me. So, anyway, so back to Abba. So I, I turn to him and I look out. So, so it, I guess what I'm trying to say is I felt extremely comfortable. I, I really did. And I still feel comfortable to this day. I, I don't have nightmares. It's like my life's been great. But anyway, so this, so all of a sudden, they, he tells me a lot of things that are going to happen. And they're all good things, nothing bad. You know how a lot of these guys write these books about the end of days and, and God's going to come down and kill everybody? What's, I, I forget what that's called. Uh, Revelations? Yeah, that's it. Revelations, that's not going to happen. None of that's going to happen. What's going to happen is, is Abba is going to come down in this, in this ship. They're going, to, they're, going to, they're going to be in Israel. They're going to give everything to Israel. Everything. And when I say everything, they're going to give them technology. They're going to, the, the, n- none of them will, will die. I mean, they're going to die eventually, but they're going to live a long, long time. There will be no more sickness. There will be no more birth defects. And then what will happen is, is they, Israel, will spread this information that they get from 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 these aliens from these aliens and they will spread it throughout the world and I'm hoping that because I'm the messenger boy I'm first in line you know after all, all the after all the Jews and the Israelis Israelis get taken care of so uh, so yes that's what's going to happen um, go ahead any questions oh yeah definitely this is this is <laughs> all very fascinating of course like I said it's amazing dude it's amazing yeah. Um, well, the first thing that comes to mind is the the Pharaoh Ankenanten, right. who who believed that there was one God. I think that that def- your story definitely aligns with that whole thing. Yes, yeah, yeah. I, well, you know, uh, Akhenaten he was way way before uh, 
yeah, he yeah, he definitely. But but I I really don't uh, uh, stay on him too much because Akhenaten, I I think he believed uh, in um, what is that called? What is the the, the belief in one God? Uh, oh, uh, monotheism. Yeah, monotheism. He believed in it until his own people murdered him. <laughs> so so <laughs> so so yeah, I don't think he really. Uh, not too many people followed him on that deal. You know what I mean? So, but um, but uh, like Moses and uh, uh, Moses and Abraham and uh, well, I'm putting I'm, I'm mixing them up. But Abraham and, and Moses and David and uh, all those guys, uh, yeah, they they paid their dues. Uh, so, go ahead. Any other questions? Yeah, definitely. What was the do you happen to know what the function of the Great Pyramid was? Yeah, I sure do. And I can actually, I can actually, you know, you got to remember something. Everything begins, ends, and begins again with the Great Pyramid. The Great Pyramid, th- this being showed me uh, that, uh, and when I say this being, I mean Amma, the, the, the alien, he showed me that there are thousands of Great Pyramids on thousands of planets that they manage. And what they do is, is they go to each planet every two to 5,000 years, okay? And each planet is in different stages of evolution. Some have dinosaurs, some have, are, it's the Revolutionary War, it's the Civil War, uh, some are, it's biblical times. Uh, but this is how, what they do is, is the Great Pyramid, was, it, it's many things, it was a machine, it did many, many things, but the main thing for us is it's a library. And every one of its sandstone blocks inside the pyramid contain information. And the, the, the information can be accessed by, this is, this is what he showed me, and, and I can actually prove it. Uh, what happens is, is, do you remember back in 2002, uh, the National Geographics did a video uh, by sending a, uh, a robot up the Queen's Chamber, Queen's Chamber Southern Shaft. Did you ever see that? I remember that being a very big deal at the time. Okay, it was a very, very big deal. And what they did was National Geographic got together with the Antiquities Department in Egypt, and they had a guy named Zahi Hawass, who was the, the main Egypt. He ran the place. He ran. He was in charge of the Great Pyramid and everything. What happens is they sent a, <clears throat> excuse me, a robot. Uh, on wheels up the, the the southern shaft, and it drilled the hole into a block. Did you remember this? They drilled the hole. Off, th- there was a four inch block, and they drilled a hole through it to see what was on the other side. Because they had found on the block, they found copper fittings, copper fittings on the block. But the problem was was uh, copper hadn't been invented by humans until fifteen hundred years after the pyramids were supposedly built. Do you remember that? Uh, vaguely. Okay, so what happens is if, if, if your listeners will go back to that National Geographic, it's called um, uh, in, Into the Great Pyramid, and it was a National Geographic video, and um, they drilled a hole. When they drilled the hole, they, after they drilled the hole into the four-inch the four block, they, uh, they put a fiber optic camera through it. Well, the camera was taking pictures the whole time. Well, they found seven inches away from that block was another white block. Well, on that block, when, when they saw the block, they, the, the host of the show, her name was Lauren Green or something like that. She was in, the, they were in the Great Pyramid. That's where they were. They were inside there. And Zahi Hawass was there. And she said, Zahi, what are those black marks on the wall there? And he said, those are just cracks. Well, my question to you is this, Daniel. How could he know there were cracks? No one had seen that for 6,000 years. So he said, those are cracks. And she said, well, they, they, look, they look more than cracks. And he said, and he got upset about it. He goes, those are just cracks. You can turn the camera off now. Daniel, they weren't cracks. They were binary code, and they're all in zeros. What it was doing was it was making a, a picture. And the picture was of the people who built the Great Pyramid, who were in charge of building it. And they were called Pitah and Sekhmet. They, uh, they were just two of thousands and thousands of aliens who, who actually built the Great Pyramid. But what happens is the way they can see, the way that uh, the world can see these images is send the, 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 um, the robot back up the, the shaft, put the fiber optic camera back into the hole, but turn the light down. The, the light was too bright. 
if the light was dimmer, it will play like a movie. What will happen is, is the binary code will, the binary code will make pictures of the beginning of of mankind, how we rec- how we were created all the way up until today. Everything is done on vibration. It's a machine, and it will it will play just like a movie. We will be able to sit on our TVs or or, or computer screens and watch the Great Pyramid show us how mankind was here, how they were, how were they, how were they, we evolved from apes. It will show the whole thing. So, um, and, and also, Daniel, all this information is in the photo. And if you were sitting here beside me, I could show it to you. So, um, yes, so everything, the Great Pyramid is a library, and we can access it by sending that robot back up there with a fiber optic camera, have the, have the, have the lights down lower on the camera, and it will, and you will see a binary code. We'll make pictures for days and days and years and years, and it will explain to us where we came from and how we uh, went from being apes into humans. Is that interesting or what? Definitely. Uh, it's, <laughs> it sounds like it sounds like Egypt, or at least Zahi Hawass, and I know he's been, I know he's been accused of this many many times by many many uh, alternate historians, but. It, it seems like they're cover, trying to cover something up or they're trying to hide something. Yes. What it is, it, uh, th- here's what it is. They want, Egypt and Egyptians are proud of the Great Pyramids and the Pyramids, okay? They want to be known as the first civilization and, and they were epic. That's what they want to believe. But they weren't. The time that these pyramids were built, they were, they were apes. We all were apes, okay? Uh, they, and I don't think, Yes, I think they try to hide it, but they don't know how to communicate with it. I do. I, 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 you know, I, I, I did meet with NASA uh, about the photo. I met with a guy. I met with a guy by the name of um, by the by the. Well, actually, I emailed him the photo. His name is Dr. Peter Warden. He was the president or director of uh, Ames, the Ames Research Center up in Northern California. So I had after I found all this stuff and I outlined the alien's face, I sent it to him. So he said, uh, he, he emailed me back and he says, Gary, I, I can't see it. And I emailed him back and I said, go into a dark room, download it onto a laptop computer and call me. So he called me. So I said, are you sitting there? I said, now tilt the laptop a little bit. Can you see the, the outline of the alien that I outlined for you? He goes, I see it. I said, okay, now we're going to zoom in on the Great Pyramid. I said, can you see those letters? He said, I see them. I said, well, those letters say, I am who I am, a creator of all things. He said, show me more. So I showed him more things. And he said, Gary, this is amazing. He said, you know NASA didn't put it there. I said, dude, I met the person that put it there. I said, don't worry about it. I know who put it there. And he said, listen, give me a couple weeks and I'll get back to you because this is just unbelievable. I said, great. Daniel, three weeks later, I see on the Internet that he retired from NASA and he cut off all contact with me. He got together with Dr. Stephen Hawking and a Russian billionaire, and they opened up a company to find extraterrestrials. Oh, my God. I know, huh? Amazing, right? But, hey, I figure that's par for the course. They don't want people to know. But naturally, because I'm a genius, <laughs> I'm not really, uh, because I think I'm smart, I said, I'm going to go to radio stations. I'm going to talk to the paranormal community. I'm going to get everybody behind us. They're all going to see the messages. And just because academics and NASA, and I know this too, I also went to the FBI. I went to the NSA, to the CIA. I filled out all the forms and I met with agents. And they all saw it, but they all pretty much cut me off. So, yeah, so I've been doing a lot. So I thought, you know who needs to see this? The paranormal, paranormal community and people that have open minds. And so, hence me talking with you. And I have nine other um, radio interviews in the next uh, two weeks. Now, Gary, one thing that I'm wondering is this this alien race, they don't seem to be the same alien greys that are abducting people. Do you happen to have any information on the uh, alien greys that have been abducting people? No, I, I, I know nothing about that. Like I said, I, I'll tell you, other than this stuff that I just told you, I've never seen an alien. I've never had had a, had a dream or heard voices or anything like that. Only this. But just know this. Those alien greys, uh, you know how when people, um, when they do cement work, a lot of people will sign their name on it? Yeah. 
you know, you, you put your handprint in it or you, or you put your initials in it. Okay. On the Great Pyramid are six civilizations that put their faces on the Great Pyramid and wrote their wrote something. And I, I found all of them in there because Abba showed me where to find them. And one of the one of the races is the gray aliens. So uh, so, yes. So they were part in our uh, evolution for sure. Now, have I seen one? Do I know they're kidnapping people and probing people? I have no idea Daniel, about that. I have no idea. But they are on the Great Pyramid. And where do where does Satan or Lucifer fit into all of this? Uh, nowhere. Uh, he works for you, you. See that big guy right there? The, the 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 outline of that big alien? Yeah. Okay. He runs everything. Satan. That that, that whole Judea, um, uh, um, uh, Christian uh, Roman. Uh, what was it? Greco Roman thing of Satan and stuff. That's all made up. That's that's not true. That's not true. Uh, he that Satan works for God, or Satan works for Abba. He's in charge of everything. So can does Abba does he actually have the ability to uh, do things like God would, like part the seas and bring people back to life and that sort of thing? Yeah, uh, you know what, bring back bring back to life. No, uh, because you got to remember th- this. This is one thing I said to him. I said. Most scholars that I talk to, they believe God is spiritual, you know, that he's not physical, okay? And I said to Abba, I said, I said, I know that you're the one who created us, that you created mankind. I said, but you have arms, you have legs, you have a chest. And as a matter of fact, he was actually, I forgot to mention this, he, he was wearing a huge red-like robe that had, um, that had um, Hebrew written on it. And he was also wearing a... a, a, a um, a breastplate of different colors, like different colored gems, okay? And it was huge. It was massive. And I said to him, I said, most of the scholars and, and a lot of the, and all the Jews believe that you're not a physical being, that you're, you're a spirit. And I said, so I see arms, I see a head. I said, I said so if that's true, who created you? You know what I mean? Because that would be your, wouldn't that be your first question, Daniel? Oh, definitely. Yeah, and he said, we don't know. So, yes, he can do these amazing things. The one thing, though, uh, that he also showed me, you know this whole thing in the Bible about the dead coming back to life and Judgment Day? That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. What happens is, is in this photo, in this NASA, NASA photo, are tens of millions of people, and all of them have names. All of them have names. Like, there's there's tens of billions of people. You, you can't see it now, but if you take your time and you look, you will see them. And they all have names. He said, Gary, that's how we're bringing back the dead. Everybody is named in this photo. And he said, he said, we cannot put flesh back on bone because their souls have gone to other bodies. And when I say other bodies, I just don't mean here on Earth. I mean on distant planets. So, so it, he, this whole thing is about our souls. Is it, is about. That, that's what Abba is all about, is our souls. They're a source of energy, and that's how they travel throughout the universe, and, and they can travel at the speed of light. So, uh, And I forgot your question. I think I went off topic. What was your question? Uh, well, I, it was just kind of a general question. I think you answered it because you, you did ask who created Abba, and uh, basically the answer was that he does not know. That's right, exactly. He said, but, but they created us. What they did was they they sent, okay, it's all in the photo. Just know this, and I can show you every step of the way. They sent their DNA throughout the universe on comets. They crashed into the earth. All this stuff came from their DNA. I, I don't, not only did they put their DNA on it, but they also put their trees and their plants and all that kind of stuff on it. So it crashes. Then what happens is, is then we evolve over millions and millions of years into apes. The one thing that stopped us from going from an ape to a human is the soul. They came down and they put human souls into apes. And it's all in the photo. Like I said, it's, it's like a warehouse. It's like it's like a factory, a soul factory. And you can actually see the apes, souls going into the apes, and then them slowly turning into, evolving into modern man. It's amazing. Like I said, I could show it to you if you were sitting here beside me. And uh, I actually have a big meeting with some uh, academics um, on Tuesday night over at the uh, 
over at one of the colleges and I'm going to show them all this stuff. So, but it's hard. It's only because I'm not technologically uh, savvy. I can't uh, work magic on the computer to, to, to show you. I actually have to sit beside these people and show them. And then I'm hopefully hoping we can get a couple, um, uh, you know, tech type guys to help me fix this up. And, and so it's easier to see. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, okay. Did you happen to have asked Abba about Jesus? Oh, yeah. It's, it, yes. It, that's all in the photo, too. Uh, <laughs> it, uh, but, but like I said, if you know anything about uh, the Jewish religion, that's the one you should go with. And when I say that, Jesus it was the Son of God. There's no doubt he was the Son of God because he's there. He's the Son of God. But he's not a God. He's not a God. What it was was, and like I said, it's in the photo. When I had some of the rabbis... They actually translated the Hebrew for me, and it explained what Jesus did. What Jesus was, he was three-quarters alien. He was only a quarter human. He looked human, but he was, he was no more human than a tree. The guy, what happened was, was he had multiple souls. Like when I saw Abba, he had, like I said, 60 people's faces in him, but he's made up of thousands of human souls. Jesus, in the photo, has approximately 20 to 30 souls, Okay. When he was put on the cross, and on the photo, he's in the cross, but he's on the cross, but he's not nailed. He's tied to the cross. And he didn't die, but two of his souls did die, or maybe even three. But it shows in the photo that what they do is, is they manipulate, Abba manipulates souls to try to make the perfect soul. So what they did was they took three of the souls from him. Now, and in the photo, it shows him getting older, and he had two boys. He had two boys. In the photo, he's with a woman with two boys, and he's kissing the woman. But anyway, uh, Abba took his souls, those souls, and he added them to some alien souls trying to make the perfect soul. So it's like, like I said, it's like a soul factory where they're trying to come up almost like a laboratory where they're trying to make the perfect soul because that soul is used for energy to go to different planets. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Do you think there might be something to the the music group, ABBA or, or ABBA? Do you think <laughs> no, there might no, be? No, no, no. That's, no, no. Not at all. No, that has nothing to do with it. Um, that's funny, though. I, I actually heard one person say, yeah, it reminds me of a couple of their songs. But no, ABBA is father in Hebrew. So, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. So, so yes, so Jesus is there. Is he the son of God? Absolutely. Is he a God? No. Does he work for God? Absolutely. Does everybody work for Abba? Absolutely. He's in control. But, but the one thing is this. When they're in another galaxy, they don't know what's going on here. You know how everybody says, oh, God is with me? No, he's, God is with you because you have part of him in your soul. But he's not here. Because a lot of people would say, because I said to him I, when I met him, I said, what about the what, what about the um, uh, the Holocaust, man? You know what was up with that? And he said we weren't here at that time. But he he told me that he didn't think that humans would be that horrible to each other because he thought our souls were a little more uh, evolved than they were. So you know a lot of people say, well, how could God let this happen? Well, he wasn't here, but he was here because we're him. You know, we're part of him. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, definitely. There you go. And what can we do to prepare for the return of Abba? Here's what we have to do. This is what I think. We have to see the photo. Like I said, the photo has four levels to it. Uh, and one of the levels is the Garden of Eden. And in the garden, you can see everything. I mean, you can see everything. You can you can see heaven. You can actually see a huge gate with pearls. I swear. I swear to you. It's true. And you can see all, everything's alive in there. You can see uh, the tree of life. And actually, the tree of life has a... Uh, her name is um, Asherah, and uh, she actually is, is a woman, so you, her, her left profile. And um, you can see God, or Abba, is actually sitting on the bank of a river, and he actually has a lamb he's holding in his left hand. He's holding it in his left arm, and written on the lamb are, is, is Hebrew, God and the Lord of the underworld. And Jesus is above them, and actually on God's right-hand side are two elephants, and they're drinking from the water. And above the elephants is, is – I don't know if you – are you familiar with anything with the Garden of Eden? Uh, yeah, I know this. I know the story, yeah. Okay, well, in the story, there was – God had put a flaming sword uh, in, front of the, in front of the tree of life. So, so Adam and Eve couldn't come and eat from it, 
and have eternal life. Well, that sword now, half of the sword is on fire, but the other half is Jesus' face. He is actually lighting the way to God, to the tree of life, and what's written on the land. Is that wild or what? And this is coming from a, not a religious guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's pretty cool. When I first saw it, I didn't know what it was, so I got together with a guy who's very, very religious. He was a Mormon. He's a Mormon here in, uh, in Arizona, and he's a good friend of mine. We play basketball. I showed it to him. He looks at it. He says, Gary, I'm looking at the Garden of Eden, and he starts crying. And I said, why are you crying? He said, because this goes against everything I believe. And I said, what do you mean? He goes, you found the Garden of Eden, and it's in Egypt. I go, well, where did you think it was? And he was told by, I forget who the prophet was, uh, Joseph Smith or something like that, that it was like in St. Louis or something. And I said, how could you ever believe that? Everything everything begins, ends, and begins again in the, cre- in, in the, the, crescent of, the crescent of civilization is in Egypt and is in the Mediterranean. And he goes, well, I just never believed that until now. And he goes, Gary, I spent my whole life believing. And I said, well, God, dude, don't worry about it. It's fine. He goes, no, you don't understand. I'm not allowed to look at this ever again. And he's never looked at it again. Damn. And Gary, uh, I ask, <laughs> I ask all of my guests this, but I just wanted to ask your opinion. This is more sure. of a, a world question. What do you think about President Donald Trump? Well, I think he's, a, I think he's a buffoon. Uh, I, th- I, 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 he annoys me to no end. Uh, but, um, what, I didn't vote for him, but, uh, but uh, whatever happens to us, let's say uh, North Korea drops an A bomb on us, or we drop one on them. Well, that's not Abba's fault. That's our fault. You know, we can't blame any god for that. That's human. That's humans doing it. And uh, and uh, you know, all I know is this: is that everything in this photo and me going down to the river, and I've been down to the river over fifty times now, Daniel, is. It's all a positive message. It's all about mankind evolving, taking that next step. The next step will be when this shows up, when Abba shows up in that craft and it lands on the, on the uh, Temple Mount, we are, going to, we are going to become a thousand times smarter uh, technologically and spiritually. And we're all going to, it's going to end up after, now it's not going to happen quickly. It's going to happen over a couple, maybe a generation or, you know, 40, 30, 40, 50 years we will all, this will eventually become the next Garden of Eden. Now, I hope that we don't drop a nuclear bomb before July 26, 2022. You know what I mean? So, um, but yeah, I'm not a fan of Trump's and I'm not a fan of the guy in North Korea either. So, so anyway, go ahead. Any other questions? Uh, we did go over our time a little bit, but oh, I sorry. do. I, oh no, it's all right. I do. I did want to go ahead and just open up the floor to you for a little bit, Gary. Uh, if you'd like to get up on the soapbox one more time, if you'd like to say anything to my audience, uh, feel free to go ahead and do that. And please follow up with any plugs that you might have. Well, here let me let me just let me say this first. If anybody wants to contact me, first of all, to get the photos, you can always go to Gary Parker Midnight in the Desert. And all the photos will be there. If you need more or you need more explanation or if you're ever in fe- in the Arizona area and you want to come down to the river and give a shout out, uh, you can always email me at this email address, g.parker, P-A-R-K-E-R, 36, that's 36, Gary, G-A-R-Y, at AOL.com. That's g.parker, 36, Gary, at AOL.com. And you feel free to, to email me and I'll send you if you guys need anything or any of your listeners. But all my soapbox is this. Um, all the stuff that you heard about Jesus and all this stuff that people go, well, that's impossible. Or, you know, him walking on water or, or anything about, uh, you know, the ancient uh, Adam and Eve and two people started everything. It's Yes, it's impossible for humans, without a doubt. These people were not human. They were not human. What happens is they were so close to this alien's DNA, Abba's DNA, they lived for 300 and 600 and 900 years. They saw things. They saw giants. They saw giants eating people. There was a flood because it was all influenced by this alien, who I call Abba, who you know is the creator of God. Uh, but also, all this stuff was real. All of it was real. 
And, and back to Jesus. One thing that Jesus did, him having all those souls, when he had children, those souls passed over to the children. His children, his two sons, had many, many children. And it all, they all spread out through the world. So not only did his, his genius, but his alien DNA and souls went through everybody. It also was, was his brilliant mind went through, passed on to his children. So all that stuff, so, so that was his purpose here. His purpose was not to die on the cross and to, uh, and to forgive you for your sins. It was to make mankind evolve, which he did, which was awesome. So anyway, so let, let me just say this too. In the NASA photo, there's also hell. There's hell. So if you think you can get away with murder and then go, well, now I believe in Jesus, or I can rape a child and say, oh, no, I believe in Jesus, please forgive me. Oh, man, you're in for a rude awakening because on, the, on this photo, it shows hell, and it is nasty. So anyway, so don't do any bad things. So to, 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 to sum up everything, on July 26, 2022, a ship is going to land on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. The world's going to freak out, but I'm going to warn everybody. So even if people think this sounds crazy, they're going to say, oh, my God, Gary warned us like five years ago. So, and I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep going until everybody knows this and everybody sees everything in this NASA photo. So what's going to happen? It's going to show up. It's going to be huge. And it's going to, and the, the beings in there, I'm going to call him Abba. He's going to give everything to the Jews, to Israel and to the Jewish people. They will trickle down effect, send all the information to all the other countries and to us. And like I said, I hope I'm first in line from America. Okay. So, but that's, what's going to happen. And, Everyone on our planet will evolve. We'll all get smarter, and we'll and believe me, we're going to go to other planets, and it's going to be unbelievable. And this planet will be like a Garden of Eden, but this time with people, not with just animals and plants. So, is that good enough, Daniel? Yeah. Well, hey, it's it's <laughs> nice. To, a lot of my guests on this program are very doom and gloom, and oh, no, no. yours yours whole thing is just. So positive, and I Dude, would really yeah, like. There's no yeah. doom and gloom with this at all. The only doom and gloom that I can see is if we go to war and they start dropping nuclear bombs. That's not Abba's fault. That's our fault. You know, we got we got to own that. So hopefully, people will all get along. And on July 26, 2022, we're going to see these the the, the 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 beings who created us, and they're just going to like they're going to just give us everything, and it's going to be awesome because they know we're flawed. Because they're flawed. They're not perfect. Just because they created us, they're not perfect beings. Those people made a ton of mistakes. They murdered a bunch of us. And they made the same mistakes throughout the galaxy. They are not perfect. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm back on my soapbox. I'm off now. Hey, uh, Gary, if you wanted to come on this show on that day, we could wait for the <laughs> whole thing together. <laughs> I'm hoping that I'm in, uh, at that time, I'm hoping that I'm either in Israel or in Egypt. And I'm dying to get to Egypt. So, so because I, I think what, if I can go over there and stand in the Nile and face these and yell out these same words, I think I can get that. Uh, I think I can get the uh, the Great Pyramid to click back on, no problem. <laughs> awesome. uh, I know it sounds nuts, but I really believe that. So, well, I I definitely want to touch bases with you after after that day. This show will definitely be around, and I'd I'd love to have you on here again. Well, if you ever want me on, just just email me, and I and, and hopefully I didn't t talk my head off. Uh, but I, I know I'm not boring, so that's one good thing. Absolutely, and but I, uh, I I don't have I don't have Facebook, I don't have books to sell, I don't have a YouTube channel. Uh, I sure I'd love to make money, but I'm not allowed to make money on this. I'm supposed to tell everybody, and it's supposed to be a giveaway, and uh, and and just know this, guys, that. That it's all positive. There's no negative. The only negative that I can see is that it's going to be scary. That's the only thing. It, it's going to be really scary, but it's going to be really, really, really exciting, too. Awesome. And until next time, Gary, you have a good night. Thank you, my brother. Okay, everybody. We are going to go ahead and take a little break. That was good times indeed that we just had. and. Now, I would like to go ahead and move on to a, let's see here, let's move on to some music. I'm going to play you some, let's see, where did that go? I'm going to play you some Al. Remember him? He used to call into the show. 
and I believe his band was called Circle A Productions. I'm going to go ahead and play some of his music. I haven't played him in a while. Uh, first song is going to be called Patient Zero, then Rome Whispers, and then Ship of Lost Souls. We'll see if we get to all of them. All right, let's go.
Hello and welcome back to End of Days Radio. Once again, I am your host, Daniel, broadcasting to you all the way from this wild Pacific Northwest, this West Coast, this beautiful, shimmering Emerald City. Oh boy, was, wasn't was that fun? Yes, indeed. I am very much looking forward to 2020. 2022, I'm sorry. Let's see, it's 2017, it's almost 2018, so that is just four years away. And I can't wait. Only four more years of all this bullshit, and then Abba is going to come down in his ship, and he's going to end it all. He's going to end all of the bullshit that's going on on this planet And I could not be more excited for that. Let me tell you, there is far too much bullshit going on out there. And I definitely want it to stop. I definitely want to watch this whole thing play out. I think it's going to be trippy for one thing. (laughs) Sounds like it's going to be like Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Um, As many of you know, there is usually more of a darker side to the, the end of days theme. The revelations, all of this stuff playing out. Traditionally, we think of natural disasters and war and famine and possibly even abstract things like alien invasion or artificial intelligence. But it is refreshing to hear a more positive take on things from time to time. It's nice to know that perhaps what's really going on that's wrong is nothing more than human ignorance It's nothing more than the shadow of the self, and maybe all that we really need is the light to come and clear it all away. Wouldn't that be nice? But anyways, we're going to keep moving on. We're going to push forward into the night. I am super happy to be here, as I always am. (sighs) You know what? I love doing this show. Let's get that straight first. Sometimes I take this show a little bit too seriously. Sometimes I get so obsessed with making it the best that it could be that I lose sight of the fun factor. And when this show is at its best is when I'm having the most fun. That's what I noticed. So I want to bring more fun from now on. I want to have more fun. I'm, I'm taking away all those stupid rules that I brought into play, like, not getting stoned during my broadcast. I see no reason to have a rule like that. This is end of days radio. It's always had the stoner vibe. So why would I ever feel like I need to be that sharp on the radio? Nobody needs to be that sharp, do they? In fact, when I'm high, I'm more intelligent, most likely. I'm much smarter. So in fact, I should be stoned when I do this show. I was just trying to be professional. I don't know what got into me. It was probably a bad move and a bad idea from the beginning. So let that be known. So let it be written. So let it be done. What else is going on in the world? A lot of people probably think that I think I'm cool. And those people would be right. And also I would be right as well. I do think that One thing we need to pay attention to are some of these recent Megalodon sightings. These tells, the footage, the pictures of the giant sharks known to be up to 60 feet in length, said to have died off after the prehistoric early times. But how do we really know that? There's some big squid down there, that's for sure. The squid closer to the surface seems to be quite a lot smaller, as if the big things tend to be down below. So I don't see any reason why there wouldn't be some big, huge, giant-ass sharks down there. I think that would be very cool, very scary. I know the Great White can get up to 20 feet in length. I believe they recently found a new record with that shark down near Australia. I believe its name was Deep Blue. 
it was just under 20 feet or something like that. But how do we really know how big these things get? There could be another species or a subspecies or a little pocket where they get much bigger. It seems like that's always going on. Some things just suffer from gigantism, and sometimes out in the wild you'll find specimens that are far beyond their peers. Sometimes you'll find isolated little areas where whole new subspecies exist, and you find things that you wouldn't even think would exist. How do we know? How do we know if there are megalodons out there? I've been watching the footage, I've been paying attention to the YouTube, and I would say... (laughs) Nine out of ten of what I'm seeing looks extremely fake, but there are a few cases here and there that have that has me really scratching my chin. And there are tales from fishermen. There's plenty of megalodon tales from the fishermen throughout history. Many tales, which for the most part people assume are tall tales. There's many tales out there of giant sharks that are just bigger than whales even. It really makes you think, right? I hope maybe someday we'll be able to talk to somebody that knows something about the Megalodon. I don't suppose there would be too many people like that out there since it is an extinct species, but maybe a shark expert who could talk about the possibility of there being a Megalodon, that would be kind of cool. If you know anybody like that, remember to email me at DanielEndOfDaysRadio at gmail.com. Yes, I use Gmail and I'm quite proud of that. Some people ask me, hey, Daniel, you know a lot about computers. Why don't you just make your address daniel at endofdaysradio.com? Well, because I like using Gmail. It's simple. It integrates with everything easily. And it's easy to remember. Daniel, endofdaysradio at gmail.com. You know what I think are cool? Especially this time of year. Those haunted house conventions where they have all the cool looking animatronic crap that's coming out next year all the stuff you can put in your haunted house if you're into that sort of thing a guy i know that works with me you know during my day job he was telling me he knows a dude that is really into that and i wonder is this a hobby or is it possible to actually have a business having a haunted house once a year loading it up with all kinds of cool little gadgetry monsters and stuff like that and I could see something like that being pretty fun. I can see why people are into it. One thing I always like to do each year is I like to go on YouTube and look up haunted houses. If it's 2017, I'll look up haunted houses 2017 so I could see what sort of interesting haunted houses there are out there. I don't actually go to haunted houses. That would be scary. (laughs) But I'll watch them on YouTube. Maybe I'll even make my own one day. I just don't like people jumping out at me. I've always hated that. I know they have this new thing in Orlando, Florida at Universal Studios. I forget what it's called, but it's this giant Halloween festival that they're having and everybody dresses up and I've been watching some videos, you know, people slap those little GoPro cameras on their head and they walk around and the thing looks cool. They've got a lot of cool little exhibits set up and Everybody's in costume, and people are just walking around. Looks like a lot of young people, a lot of hipsters. But whatever. I think it'd be fun. I love Halloween. Halloween is my favorite holiday, even though Christmas tends to feel much more festive when we drink eggnog and cook ham and do things of that nature, eat Christmas cookies, get presents, give presents. There's so much more involved. Yet Halloween has always had that atmosphere. It's the one time of year where things can be scary, where people can... Everybody's a goth on Halloween. You know those goth kids you went to high school with? Well, everybody's one of them on Halloween. It's the one time of year the creatures of the night can creep and crawl out of their hidden little little places where they sleep during the day. It's the one time where they can escape the confines of the darkness and enter into the light with the rest of us. (laughs) Right? I mean, Halloween's cool, isn't it? Okay, whatever. Let's move on. Uh, Okay, let's get into the news a little bit. Oh, actually, I'll read you a letter. 
Let's see here. Sorry, sorry about the pause. Dead air. That's what everybody wants to hear, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, this is a letter. This one's a little negative. Uh, hi, Daniel. Your show is great, and you are probably the best radio voice I have heard in quite a long time. However, I hate how you are one second you are... This guy writes weird. <laughs> However, I hate how you one second are a free thinker, and the next you sound like a conservative. Please stop forcing your right-wing beliefs down our throats and just let us hear the good paranormal radio you are capable of. Signed, Tony. Ouch, Tony. You stabbed me in the heart with that one. That is quite the burn. Well, Tony, I don't know so much that I have right-wing beliefs. I don't really think I do, even though I criticize liberals a lot on this program. I do actually believe in abortion. I think that abortion is probably a good thing. Overall, nobody can deal with unwanted babies and malice to feed. I don't think that victims of rape or incest or or crack babies and things like that, I, I think that there should be a way out of that situation. I think that there are cases when a child would suffer, like if it's born with a medical condition that would cause a lot of pain in its life. I, I would call that humane. I understand that's a soul, that's a spirit, and I understand that there's an afterlife. However, I do think that sometimes abortion's a good decision. So that's one thing that I am not conservative on, and if you disagree with that, I'm sorry. Um, what else am I not conservative on? That's pretty much <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry, but the older I get, the more conservative I tend to become. Things just change so fast. I'm getting older. I'm almost 35 years old. I'm not a young person anymore. I'm right there in the middle. I'm getting close to being right there in the middle. <laughs> right? That's what I tell myself. I'm not quite there yet. I believe you're officially middle-aged when you hit 40, so I'm still youthful. I'm probably not one of the young anymore, but I tend to just think more conservative as I get older. Uh, no, I don't agree with certain <laughs> certain things that are associated with the conservative side of things, such as the racist connotation. I'm definitely not racist. I am of mixed race. I am part Asian, so that automatically disqualifies me from being racist. Right? So, I don't... I definitely don't have one racist bone in my body. I do get a little bit annoyed with certain feminist stuff that I hear. I think that feminists can be annoying, but I don't have a problem with feminism at least in the sense of when it's used correctly and it's really about doing the right thing and it's not stuff that is just ridiculous. Like, never mind. I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> right. <laughs> even I don't have that much balls. I've got a lot of balls, but you got to be careful around certain topics. Let's move on. I got a little bit of news for you all. It seems that a Mandalay Bay security guard who disappeared last week moments before he was scheduled to break his silence in television interviews has not been heard from since he went to a walk-in clinic. A walk-in clinic. Sorry, my Washingtonian accent was coming in through there. His union president said he went to a walk-in health clinic, his union president said. So, somebody has some information, and suddenly they disappear. Surprise, surprise. Surprise, surprise. Somebody who may have had some smoking gun information suddenly disappears. People, this is real. This stuff is real. It can be dangerous sometimes. Sometimes the more you know, the more dangerous that you can be. But 
There's a reason why we're into this. Because we want the truth. And we don't believe anybody has the right to lie to us. I don't believe that anybody walking on this earth is better than me. And I don't believe that anybody walking this earth is better than you. I believe that we are all equal. I believe that we are individuals and we have power as individuals. And we don't need Big Brother there. We don't need authority there. We don't need a government that acts like parents. If anything, I would probably be more of a libertarian than a Republican. I think that that party most closely aligns with my particular beliefs. Oh, boy. I also wanted to talk a little bit about skeptics. For whatever reason, I always feel compelled to try to wake people up, make them aware of certain topics, make them aware of certain ideas. But I get really frustrated sometimes because people are so programmed out there, aren't they? And the moment you start even going there, their belief system starts to break down. And a lot of people get frustrated. They get angry. They don't want to hear it. It's too shocking to their world. It's too shocking to their worldview. And society and their external environment has been reinforcing certain ideas to them the entire time. (laughs) The entire time they've been on this earth. Hold on, let me grab a sip of Mountain Dew. But you you guys understand what I mean? So many people out there... Oh, man. So professional. So many people out there, they are so thick-minded, and they are so... They bar any outside ideas. They are so close-minded... You, you're you just wasting your time trying to do that. Trying to wake up people on an individual basis. It is a waste of time. Maybe if a person is open-minded, you might try planting a few seeds. But really, I highly encourage everybody out there to find some medium, find some platform that they can use to spread truth. I think that if we can propagate this information... I think that if we can help each other, if we can network, and we can form communities that are devoid of overcompetitiveness, jealousy, if we can avoid that and if we can work together, I think we can really make something happen. I do. All of you people out there that have your shows, that have your podcasts, that have your this or your that, I think that... If we all really sat down, and I'm not saying that we have to fly under any banner, you can fly under your own banner, but if we all sat, if we all sat down and we really put our heads together and we really did what we could do to wake everybody up, I think that we can make a difference. I do. And I'm talking about you little person out there. You're not as little as you think you are. Every person who's doing this makes a huge difference. And all you have to do is get started. And once you get started, you'll start getting that momentum and you will start flying forward. And I don't care how you do it. I don't care if you do it through music. I don't care if you do it through YouTube. I don't care if you do it through stand-up comedy. Think about how many ways you can bring up these concepts. Think about how many different ways that you can express yourself out there. And I'm just saying, don't waste your time getting frustrated with the individual who just won't listen. Skeptics can waste a lot of your time. A lot of them just like to argue. 
And they're probably doing that because it makes them feel intelligent. Because you're an easy target. You believe in weird things. So you're an easy target to pick on and somebody to make make stupid. <laughs> make stupid. <laughs> you're, you know, you're an easy target for them to make look stupid. Right? So don't put yourself in that position. Be smart about how you do this. We have to be smart about it. And we have to be unified and we have to put our heads together and create think tanks. And yeah, I mean, ego is going to get involved. It always does. But we got to keep pressing forward and heal our wounds and keep moving forward. And I really do think that every little light out there is making a difference because one of these days we'll connect all the dots all across the world and light up the entire planet. And it's happening. I mean, we have what we need. We just have to get the word out before they shut us down. Should we all be prepping and learning to survive and doing stuff like that? I think to a certain extent, yes. But I don't want to encourage paranoid types of thinking, isolation, things of that nature. So I would say no and yes. I do think it's nice to know how to hunt. I mean, I love animals, but hunting is something that happens in nature. And if you know how to do it, you probably have a better chance to survive. In this modern society, does that knowledge really help you that much when you can get a hamburger from any McDonald's? Probably not, but that hamburger had to come from somewhere. And we've all heard this argument. The farms are worse than a hunter killing an animal because the animals are tortured, they live in horrible conditions, small spaces, etc., etc. I'm not really judgmental if you are vegan or vegetarian. I think that is a very moral choice. I mean, good for you. That is a very ethical, spiritual, clean choice that you are making of cleaning your body and your aura and increasing your vibration. I'm all for that stuff. I just can't bring myself to give to give up my my salami, my pepperoni, my sausage, my burgers, my chicken sandwiches. That'd be tough. But if you are doing that, then I don't I'm not criticizing you. I'm all for it. I have another news story for you all. This comes from the National Post, nationalpost.com. Billy Corgan. You may know him from the hit band Smashing Pumpkins. Smashing Pumpkins. And you might also know him as being involved with TNA Wrestling for a short time. I'm a pro wrestling fan, and I'm also a fan of Billy Corgan's music. And when I when I uh, was watching TNA Wrestling, I gained quite a bit of respect for the guy, and I realized that this is an example of a real genius. A genius in the music artistic zone, and a genius in the business world. And if there is anybody who I think should be on our side, it's this man, Billy Corgan. Well, he was on the Howard Stern show, which I'm also a fan of. And he revealed a story. And he said, in quotes, let's just say I was with somebody once and I saw a transformation that I can't explain. He said, insisting he was totally sober at the time. Imagine you're doing something and suddenly you turn around and there's somebody else standing there. Pressed to reveal more about the encounter, Corrigan said he didn't have much information and would actually rather not go into details. So, it appears that Billy Corrigan witnessed shape-shifting. Oh no, shape-shifting is not real. Why does Daniel always talk about shape-shifting and reptilians and stuff like that? He's crazy. He's a crazy lunatic. He took too many drugs back in high school. That's actually true. 
He took too many drugs back in high school and his brains are blown. Oh my god. <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about. This stuff is real. Yeah, let that sink in. It is real. And it happens to more people than you can think. And you know what the problem is? When you're dealing with ghosts and the astral plane, and you're dealing with outer space or whatever's out there, when you're dealing with these concepts, you're getting into an area where human understanding has really hit its limit. But who's not to say that alien civilizations or entities or some sort of higher intelligent might be able to grasp much more than us? So how can we really sit here and say that we have it all figured out? There's obviously a lot out there that we do not understand. And we should not assume that people are lying when they say that they saw somebody shapeshift. There could be aliens or androids or holograms walking right alongside you while you're walking through the city. Now, I used to work downtown here in Seattle. I remember sometimes during my lunch breaks, I would go walk down through the streets and I would walk around the city and there were so many people, just people everywhere of all kinds, a a lot of beautiful women. If you want to see some beautiful women, I know that LA, Los Angeles has a reputation for having all the beautiful women, but I would say that Seattle area gives that area a major run for its money. Absolutely. Especially if you know where to go. Like if you go actually go downtown in Seattle, you see women that look like 11s. You know a 10 would be like a perfect 10. There are actually real 11s walking around. And some of those 11s, I'm telling you, they're too perfect. There's no way those are real humans. No real human can be that anatomically perfect and tall and skinny, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know what I'm saying? How could you be that tall? that thin, and have a chest that looks that natural and be that large. You get what I'm saying? And some of these women have a certain look to them. They just, I don't know. They look too perfect. I I have to think those must be robots or androids. But perhaps I'm just wearing my foil hat. Okay, let's see here. Uh, Somebody asked me, What defines a dumb liberal? (laughs) You really want me to go there? You people, you try to get me in trouble. Well, I would say a dumb liberal would be somebody that takes advice from Katy Perry. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like, Like somebody that is like, oh, Katy Perry thinks this. That must be right. Or or perhaps people that might watch The View and actually take anything those women are saying seriously. <laughs> I would say that's a good estimation. I don't know. I I think the people that go out there and some of the protesting is pretty over the top. I, I you know, I don't want to offend anybody out there, but I think some of the violent protests over certain topics are a little over the top. I th- I would say those people are being a little bit dumb because they're going to get themselves in trouble when they should be doing peaceful protests. It's like they learned nothing from the late great Martin Luther King or the great Gandhi. Don't they know about the peaceful protests? That's the only way to really affect change. You're not going to change anything by throwing bricks through windows. You're just going to create more fighting and more animosity. You have to cut that stuff out. Uh, Let's see here. I do have some more to talk about, but I'm probably going to save some of this stuff. Oh, I have another letter here. This person wishes to remain anonymous, but they say, Daniel, you were way too hard on dating apps. I met my wife from a dating app, and we are quite happy. Okay, fair enough. Whatever works for you, 
I think that that is great. I think that if if being <laughs> if 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 you are able to actually get those things to work for you, then I say that absolutely. Who am I to say that that is not a viable option for a person increasing their increasing their chances of happiness. I think anything you do to increase your chance of happiness is a good thing. If that means putting ads on the internet, then of course you should do that. But I think there's a reason why you see a lot more men than women on those things, because they're probably really paranoid about serial killers, rapists, stalkers, and things like that. So, I tend to shy away from those things. Every once in a while, you see a news story. Oh, so and so met another person on a personal side, and and a female serial killer. She tried to cut a guy's heart out and eat his heart. And it's like, oh man, you don't even know who you're gonna meet up with. I think as a guy, I would feel less <laughs> less threatened doing something like that, but you never know. I mean, there are some shady bitches that will swipe your wallet <laughs> or, or keep the change or, you know, even hurt you or stab you or, or set you up so her white trash guy friends can jump you. You gotta, you guys got to watch out for stuff like that. Be street smart. Don't just be smart about the Illuminati and stuff like that. Remember, it all starts on a ground floor level. You got to be street smart above many other things because you got to watch your back. And if you don't have your health and you can't survive, then you're going to have a hard time doing anything else. So uh, do whatever you need to do to smarten yourself up and uh, avoid, avoid situations that might increase your risk of danger. Maybe that means going the speed limit right? (laughs) Maybe that means finding a job where you don't have to drive as far and be on the road so much. Maybe that means eating more vegetables so you don't develop cancer. Anything that you can do to extend your life and your happiness, I say do. And be positive above anything else. A lot of people are going to try to get in your head. They're going to try to get in your bubble. They're going to try to stop you. Many people feel jealous. There's a lot of jealousy out there. If they, if anybody sees that you are doing something positive, a lot of people try to drag you down because they, it's, they're not doing that for you. They're doing it for themselves because they, that's their insecurity. We all have insecurities. We all don't, don't like when somebody's waving their bone around and making us jealous like dogs do. I mean, we are animals and you're going to run into a lot of jealousy out there when you start doing what you're supposed to do and being positive and creating change and making a difference. You're going to run into that because people are going to see the power that you have to make a difference. And even if you are using it in a good way, people are going to try to get in your way because they, they don't have that themselves and they somehow see the happiness that it's bringing you. And they somehow see that, that you're just inter- interacting with people. They don't like that. They, everybody wants to have popularity, right? And they don't even see the other side that comes with it. They don't see the danger that you're putting yourself in. They don't see that. I, I have whistleblowers contacting me. Like this information that we got out tonight. This is what I'm talking about. We are trying to get the message out. I've got another guest coming out and he has some heat on him and that's okay because this is end of days radio and we're going to keep going even if it gets a little scary sometimes. And if that entertains you, that's fine. If it thrills you, that's fine. I don't care what your reasons are. But I just hope that all of you out there believe in what we're doing. And I hope you join with me and try to affect that change. Make people aware. 
Make them aware of the imbalance. That's all you have to show them. Show them that they're getting screwed. And they'll start to see the truth. Show them the money. Oh, as for our mind-blowing moment of the day... Uh, hold on, let me grab my maraca. Oh. All right, man. Oh, shit. It's the goddamn mind-blowing moment of the day. Whoa. So today's mind-blowing moment of the day, I would say... <clears throat> would be those pictures of Egypt that Gary talked about. The... Aramaic writing underneath the Great Pyramid. I, I mean, that's pretty fascinating, right? And those are NASA photos. So I would say that was definitely the mind-blowing moment of the day. And we will be back next week. We will be talking to the legendary Adam Kakesh, the legendary free thinker, the guy that often gets accused of being the late departed Jonathan Brandis. I think enough. Po I think enough hosts have asked him about that, right? And he'll usually laugh it off, and he'll kind of play around with it. And I think it's been out there enough. What I want to do is, I want to really talk to Adam about serious stuff. I want to talk to him about his beliefs. I want to talk to him about his mission, what he's doing, and. I want to take this seriously. We can have fun. We can have fun. But I'm probably not going to focus too much on the Jonathan Brandis thing because that can really derail things from the actual message. And remember, all things End of Days Radio, go to endofdaysradio.com. I, I tend to do a lot of plugs on the show, and I'm probably going to cut down on that because... I don't think that that's really useful to the audience. You can see all the information if you just go to endofdaysradio.com. I mean, that's a good website. I made that whole site from top to bottom. Excuse me, I'm the one that maintains it. I put a lot of work into it. So I don't know why I'm always plugging my Twitter and Facebook and stuff like that. Just go to the website. You want to donate to the show? Go to the website. You want to participate in the forum? Go to the website. You want to talk to me? get my email or learn more about me go to the website click on about me i'm going to put more information about myself on there because people out there they think i'm this mysterious character they think this they think that a lot of people out there might even think i'm not that nice of a guy i try to be myself this is my one outlet where i can actually be myself this is the only time where I am really comfortable to be somebody that has as freakish and outlandish beliefs <laughs> as as I do. And I hope this can be your outlet too. I hope that perhaps you get a sense of that when you listen to this show. That there are still places out there that are like the Wild West where we can cut loose. And what else? <laughs> I think that's pretty much everything. I'm so happy that you guys listened. I'm so happy that you guys have stuck with me through the thick and the thin. And when I take breaks, you guys, you guys get loud and you guys get rowdy. And that makes me just want to do a show every goddamn day. <laughs> when I see that type of response, I just want to put more and more out there. And I try to make this show as good as possible. And I think a lot of you recognize that. And I think you recognize that you're not always going to agree with my beliefs. You're not always going to agree with the way that I handle things. But this show is for you. And this is a place where you can cut loose. You can always call into this show or join me in the forum. And I, I always promise that free speech, free speech is probably top five things in my life. I think that it's the one thing that keeps us Americans and keeps us free. You know what? Forget keeping us Americans. So many of you guys out there aren't even in this country. You're out there in England. I see you listening out there, out there in Canada, India, New Zealand. You're all around the world now. 
And that really blows my mind. The response, the international response, and the fact that this broadcast really is reaching across the whole globe. If it is a globe and it's not flat. Anyways, I think I've said enough. I've said so much, I've said enough. Good night, everybody. This is the end of days. I'm Daniel. Have a good night. is coming. The king has returned from the broken ruins of Babylon. This is the end of days.